yes, they call themselves. And in addition to that, the enemy have really set up so many um, uh, people that he was going to use. I believe some of you know some of my stories. I always share some of the of my stories where the enemy will want to say, preach, preach only faith, preach only faith, only faith on what condition, so that the enemy will have access to this person and start using this person against the gospel of Jesus Christ. I also want us to have this understanding, or rather remind you that the enemy, Satan, always want to take the place of God. Always want to take the place of God and always want to kind of counterfeit everything that God have created. So that's why the book of Isaiah made us to understand that Satan want to sit in the congregation of the children of God and want to lead the children of God because he wants to be like God. He wants to do things to us, to people like God. He is an imitator and because he's an imitator, he has a bunch of his agents that are set out out there and you see the Lord Jesus warned us in these last days that many will come in his name. Even many will present themselves as Christ. But you know one thing, that stage whereby they said, um, I, I'm Jesus. People, some of them that presented themselves that they are Jesus, that stage have passed. I know in some certain places, like in some certain part of the world, some are really presenting themselves as Christ. And you will not see, you see, they will not really come in person and say, oh, I am presenting myself, I am Christ. But rather they use a form of uh, uh, another name. But the spirit in there is the spirit of a Satan, the spirit of Antichrist, using people to counterfeit the work of God, to deceive the children of God, and mislead. Thereby, the word of God, you see the spirit of Leviathan. When, you remember when uh, uh, Adam and Eve, God instructed them not to eat the fruit in the garden. So, when Satan was speaking to Adam, he said, did God actually say you should not? Or did God actually say you will die? You see, the Satan tend to twist the word of God. And brethren, that is what we see today. If you are not um, somebody that is so curious, whatever, even this session, be curious as you are listening to me, so that you can go back to the scriptures and say the scriptures and also pray so that God will give you insight, understanding to what this session is so that you will not be misled. So if some people are not, don't, don't, are not curious to cite the scripture, just like in the book of Acts of Apostles, after the disciples finished teaching and counseling, you know, teaching and counseling some people, they still went back and cite the scriptures. That's what I look at spiritual growth because they want to know is this of God or is this not of God. So I will always encourage everybody that hear the sound of my voice, cultivate the habit of being curious so that you go back to the scriptures and search if this is true, what this woman is saying, if it's true, so that also wherever you somebody preach to you you want to check the scriptures number three i'm going to say here is what is the fruit you see in that person the fruit by their fruit we shall know them so you want to check the fruit what are the what am i seeing what are the characteristics that is being presented to this person for me to know if this person is of god or not but mind you some some are like serpents so conniving Come so gentle, come so gentle, but all they are after is to be able to hold your decision, manipulate you, be able to hold these people so that the people cannot be able to be curious, rather they'll be manipulated into accepting this person. And that's what I look at, hypnotism. You see, hypnotization and hypnotism is really spread so many areas, so, so whereby even if you find yourself in a place like this, you still want to do what? Have this habit of prayer. Lord, if this is of thee, confirm it. If it's not of thee, confirm it and prove to me. You know, have this because growing up, I used to pray this prayer. Sometimes there are some certain dreams I would dream. If I don't understand, I would say, my prayer then as a growing Christian, I would say, Lord, if this is of thee, let it be. If it's not of thee, I reject it. I refuse it. I cancel it in Jesus' name until I came to understand that I have to request for the discerning spirit. I didn't know the Lord gradually grew, helped me in the area of discerning spirit that with the scriptures and when I listen and I pray, the spirit of God being a lot, it grows natural because when you draw close to Christ, his spirit, you are sealed with the Holy Spirit. And is that Holy Spirit that continues to convict you in the word of God, guiding you so that you will not be deceived. So 
you'll be able to use the word of God to to, to know God's word, draw close to God, and the spirit of, of the word of God keep washing everything that is not right in your temple, right? So when you have this manner, this behavior, or this habit, this curious search, you have it and you pray through for God to give you understanding, give you discerning spirit, you'll be able to discern. And one example, one example growing up, I will, I, I, I will say here is, there are some people that I will come across, you know, my spirit will not accept them. Nothing they do will accept them. And I noticed that there was this person that my spirit didn't accept. For one piece, my spirit didn't accept this person. I didn't know that this person was in court. You know, I didn't know he was in court. But for me, my spirit didn't accept this person. Another person was somebody that was in witchcraft. My spirit didn't accept that person. They come friendly. They want to they do some certain things friendly. But my spirit didn't accept them. It's a discerning spirit. You pray for it. The Lord will give as we request, okay? So today we are going to look at many ADC, who is in charge? Um, a lot of you know, this time it's not the mission to Hades, but when the Lord started, uh, started with me, he started take, took me to, at least I was, we are going to discuss like two places, two places the Lord took me to. And these are the creatures already, I said the demons that were buried on the ground. And one is buried on the ground, the other one was, I call it the window demon. I believe I must have shared this with some certain, some people here. So, but at the same time, I want us to pray that the Lord will lead us, we reject the voice of the enemy, we reject the spirit that is not of God that gathered to speak, to mislead here in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus. And I thank you for this great opportunity to speak your word and for you to give us understanding, open our eyes of understanding to reveal mysteries that we know nothing about and give us deeper understanding. So this we are going to reveal today. Even I myself speak through me, Holy Spirit, that we all will be edified. We all will be prepared, walk in righteousness, determined to make heaven as we obey your word and help us to live by your word in truth and in spirit giving us understanding to your word that we may not be deceived in the mighty name of jesus satan i break your hands i cancel your evil plots you demonic spirit of wandering thought itching ear you foul spirit i break your hands in the name of jesus i command you to get out into abyss in jesus name thank you heavenly father and let your presence fill this place speak in the name of jesus in Jesus' name, amen. I welcome you again. This evangelist catch in favor, Nathan. So as we flow today, first, there's something I want to share here. I got a warning, right? The Lord, I wrote them down so that just flow with me. As I read, I'll be explaining. The Lord was angry with me because I was afraid to put in writing the information he reveals to me. Also because I felt that I missed a well-paid job. And when the Lord started working with me, I missed a well-paid job. After the Lord had warned me, instructed me to be serious with every message he gives me. Because that, that job will kind of take up most of my time. But that it was a well-paid job. So I was in between. I'm like, I didn't get this job and I have this to do and all that. So the Lord provide. Don't misunderstand me here. I have a job. I, I believe every Christian work hard and they to provide for your family. Don't go sit down and cross your leg and think, oh, because I'm a minister, man, I will be falling from heaven, put pressure on the people that are, you are minister to. Mm -mm. I, that's not what I'm talking about here, please. And that's where the problem in the body of Christ of this prosperity preaching manipulation to make money started when people somebody say he's or she is called in the ministry they don't wait and let god direct them when to stop working because the, the, the lord will provide for anyone he has called you understand so i'm not against full-time ministry please I'm, a, I'm on full-time ministry but i have a job depending what the lord will provide the job for me that will give me time and it's the grace of god it's not man's making so i encourage everyone please Provide for your family. Work hard. Provide for your family. As the Lord leads you, when that time comes, when it's for full time, so that you don't you don't serve God with pain. You don't serve God with grumbling. You don't serve God intimidating people. You don't serve God pushing people so hard to provide your need. No, the accepting Jesus is is of peace. It's to freedom, not to impose uh, pain on people because of, of your resources. Okay, so. 
when that happened because i didn't get that job I, I was thinking that if i get this one i'll be able to get this and get that and get that but not knowing that god the lord have other plans for me so the anger of god was so much against me that i was not able to focus as a mother and wife i was spiritually restless because most of what he was showing me i wasn't writing so i went to god in prayer and i prayed for mercy forgiveness also that the lord should give me peace because i didn't have peace you can god can tell you uh, if just now we have we have um we have a, a, a many are deceived right and these are the days the lord has said that this is when you do this you have to do this follow me through right so if we're supposed to have this session right and i said okay i have another thing to do i cancel it willfully because i know i'm in the position to arrange organize it so I choose another one more than this. That's where there's restlessness. God is not an order of confusion. He can't impose on you and tell you to stop your job. God does not work like that. Only when he knows there's another way he wants to deal with you and he will, he will provide for you, that's the way the Lord works. Get me right, brethren. Please, these are some certain teachings that have really affected the body of Christ. Okay? So I, I was restless. The Lord made me to feel what he was feeling. When his presence filled my bedroom, I felt so much pain, regret, disappointed. The Lord opened my eyes to see that his back was turned against me because I saw him. He was just backing me. And I pleaded and I said, Lord, because it wasn't like that, you know, you, you know. So I pleaded, Lord, why am I seeing only your back? I'm just seeing only your back. He replied and said, just listen, brethren. You choose to do what you want and disappoint me like others who did not do what I want them to do but were after their own belly the people are being manipulated how witchcraft they use witchcraft um um, um manipulation and um, intimidation to control people's thoughts and reasoning that they can't pull out in any fold that is thought of god rather they keep hailing the errors because they worship this human being but not god so that session will be coming on thursday but i want us to listen okay so he asked me, will you fail me too? No man have put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. Listen, I'll continue. I could not answer the Lord because my tongue was stuck to the hard palate in my mouth. Like my, my tongue was stuck to the roof of my mouth. I was not given the utterance to respond. Throughout the Lord was talking, I was crying, feeling that pain and disappointment more because when the Lord granted me grace to in Hades, when he's there, when the when the the, the person that, that is in Hades, dead already, is kind of giving the story how they live here on earth. I feel the pain the Lord feel. He make me feel what he feel. And for what I see there is regret, pain, serious pain. Throughout the Lord was talking, I was crying, feeling that pain and disappointment more. Even after the prayer, I still picture the Lord in that long, white, glowing garment. When he turned and faced me, the question kept ringing bell in my head. Will you fail me too? That's the book of, I said, that's the book of um, Luke 9, 62, which said, And Jesus said unto him, No man have put his hand to the plow, and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. Being fit for the kingdom of God demonstrates the seriousness of commitment to him, engaging in the task of heavenly services to work for God, while distracting signif distracted signifies lack of seriousness. Whatever that would distract you is lack of seriousness. That conviction of connection is not there. Having firm grip is full determination to follow Christ by putting him ahead in the family, job, trial, test. It should be a hundred commitment. You see, he has to be in charge in everything about you, your family, your job, your children. Put him first because his protection is in him. It's a commitment. When you welcome him, he's in, I'm telling you, even the way you dress, even your cooking, he's involved. He will guide you. His spirit will guide you. It's a hundred, this should be a hundred percent commitment all the way for both Christians and church leaders. Just plow a straight, a straight line. Looking back is drawing back from the same dedication and determination to obey Christ and his word. I concluded in my mind to do as the Lord <laughs> instructed and not drop the plow lines or leave the moor standing in the field, okay? So, therefore, I write what the Lord reveals to me and do what he instructs me full time. I might be whatever I'm doing, 
once I'm meditating and the message come, boom, I'll quickly write it down because any message, you see, let me give you an example. It's like in a, in, in a class, the teacher comes in and give you instruction, give you instruction. You write it down, right? That day is gone. That day is done. So we go to the next chapter. For you to go back, you have to pray for that vision to come back. That's where he confirms it again. That it's him. That's why sometimes when you see he give me, most of our messages is kind of by revelation. Give me this, give me this, give me this. When you look at it, they are all the same message. He confirms. That's why he confirms his word. He will confirm it. But mind you, he has given you that assignment. Heaven have recorded it that you are committed to do this one. So you have to, it's left for you to do it. Because everybody will have their reward. You are going to be rewarded for the work you do. So you will check, am I being rewarded? How many works am I, have I left undone that have not been rewarded? So it's a personal question. It's a personal answer, sorry. So it's not between you and God. So this, let's go on. Who is in charge in many folds, in many churches? Who is in charge? As you and I are communicating now, what is my foundation? Where, what, where am I coming from? Where is my source of energy? Where is my source of power? What is giving me the utterance to speak before you? Who is in charge here? You, you can test the spirit as you're listening to me. But let us check others too. Who is in charge? The basement demon. Listen, the Lord brought me into a wide church auditorium that had staircases under the platform. I went down the staircase and found out that there was an apartment under the staircase, brethren. That really stunned me. Standing in front of the door of the apartment was a horrible, when I say horrible, dark looking creature. Demonic creature. The demon with, with his, he had his rake. It was his, um, look at like an animal, like uh, the tail is long with this uh, white tipped shovel that we used to, you know, pick up leaves. You know, when you want to pick up a bunch of leaves. So that's how the shovel, the, uh, it's like, um, it's rake, yeah. But the, the type of rake is the long type. It's a, it's a wrong type that have to pick up a bunch of leaves. That's how the rake is. Not the, it's not the short type of rake. Okay. The demon lived under the platform just as we live in real life, brethren. It has his kitchen, his toilet, bathroom, living room. And he went about his business daily under the building. Because when we got there, I remember when we got there, and from the front of the building, and we just, the Lord, I saw the church auditorium. In real life, I know this church auditorium, right? And God grant me grace to know where the area is, right? So we walked in, we went down this, I'm like, I was just following, the Lord was just leading me. I, we went down the staircase. When we went down the staircase, mind you, is the staircase is beside the the the, the wide pulpit, right? The this time I was not taking down, down. It's like, it's like another apartment under this, under the, um, under the, 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 the platform. So under the platform is like a, you can call it a, an apartment, a flat, self-contained. That's what I can use here. So the living room, he went about his daily business. He did not notice my presence. I thought he did not, but let's watch. He did not notice my presence. I walked up to the creature, started praying because binding and losing like any Christian would do. As I was praying, the demon was going back and forth, not bothering or touch. And then I asked, but how can I be binding and losing? Nothing is happening. What are you doing here? Because this is the house of my God. The demon replied, the pastor brought me here. I instructed, you have to leave. The demon replied, I cannot leave. The pastor planted me here. And you cannot remove me because the foundation was not founded by your Lord. Use that word, your Lord. I was shocked and disturbed. Immediately, the Lord took me back to my house. I had so many questions. What? That was in the beginning. On my bed, I was so disturbed that early morning with so many questions in my mind. How a demon can possibly remain in a gathering where the name of the Lord is called. The Lord did not tell me anything. So I will say, I guess, like in the book of, I guess I forgot what happened in the book of Job chapter 1 verse, chapter one verse 6. Where, you know, now, Job chapter 1 6 said, Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan came also among them. I guess I forgot this portion of the scripture. When I saw that, that was what going on in my head. 
But he said, when I was buying, he said, I cannot kick him out. I started putting two and two together. What is going on here? The Lord didn't give me answer. I asked so many questions. He didn't give me any answer. And that was in the beginning because I, like I said in the beginning, uh, uh, you know, if you keep watching some of my messages, I have this mindset that anybody that named the name of the Lord will make to is going to make heaven. Anybody that is praying the name of Jesus will make heaven. But remember the first story with the, my encounter with Christ. He said they use his name as a cover up for their mission to get crowd. That's one thing that we must put in mind. That's one thing we must put in mind. Then, a few days later, the Lord visited and took me to where I saw the same type of demon sitting on a window of a church building that was about was under construction. I know I've shared this before to a lot of people, but the Lord want me to bring it up again as we are moving into more of exposure of witchcraft manipulation, more of, more of area we can be able to resist so that you know when a wrong teaching is presented before you. Just as I'm explaining to you the purpose and the goal of every message you get, you see? So this is how you want to discern and test the spirit, okay? So, there were piles of stick. It, it, it's, a, it's, some, it's a building that was about co being constructed, right? But I saw the wall. Let me go on. There were piles of stick, blocks, sand, concrete, and other building materials. Some of the sticks were stuck in the soil that was already dug, right? I walked up closer for a clearer view. This time, I did not ask the demon any question, but I inquired in spirit to know what I was looking at. Now, listen, when it's like when I came, right, the, the building was about under every uh, building materials were there. But there was one thing, the wall was already stuck to the ground. There was a, a wall already stuck to the ground and that wall have a window. That wall have a window and there was no other another person there but i just saw this demon i was like what is this for it's like a wall they, they just started they just put they just started on the window side remember why is it window jesus is the way the truth and the life jesus is the door that leads us to christ there is no other way whereby we might be saved no other door jesus is that true door any other door is not of god but what did i see here is the window the window demon he sneaks in and sneak out okay this is where i want to separate that's why when i see some of this i want to compare it to the word of god because jesus is the door so this is the window this is not of god the demon i was looking at was supposed to be yeah this time i did not ask the any as the demon any question i was made to understand that the building project will not continue without a human person to represent as the pastor as a head there a human person if some of you remember when i always share the encounters i have um when i started the ministry like i always have this strong uh, attack and the demon satan you hear the voice of the enemy speak a couple of times they come in various places i might be sleeping i find myself in another place they will ask telling me just preach only faith we give you we make you known all over the world we will give we will have so many servants you have so many buildings people will know you and we will give you the power to function just preach on the faith don't don't preach or say those things you, have, you see that i say i will not what is my what is my gain to live is for christ to also die is for christ so what is life without christ so that's one example i'm going to give us so with that i come to know and there was a time let me share something with you guys i remember when i was um I think I was pregnant with my first son. I believe I've shared this before. Brethren, when you come in contact with something like this, that the demonic spirit that is in charge, that is going to be in charge, whoever, take it from me, whoever that is going to stand as the person that will be the pastor or head leader of this organization, whatever it is, or duty, job, I'm using, because this is a Christian forum, I'm using ministers, a preacher, somebody that's called himself, a, a, a fellowship leader whoever that is going to be the head of this must give something they must give something so now i was pregnant with my first child i remember that day i just came out was just looking around i could hear the voice of satan just to my side 
why don't you leave this marriage? You, you, are, you are raised with so many uh, potentials, but look at where you are. Leave this marriage. I'm going to give you a good job, a good position, a good ministry. You'll be known. I'm like, what? At that time, I didn't really know where this, where did, this was coming from because I was a pregnant woman, and I know I have my time. I always go, with fellowship and you know, with the Lord and all that. I didn't know there's a purpose of this coming up, right? Another time he came, I said, Leave this marriage. I'm going to give you this. I'm going to pro when I say promises, brethren, this was just the beginning of the uh, counter. I always have like promises of not preach the gospel, but say something else. Don't reveal, don't say what you see. I said, No. And then I was pregnant. It was later I was made to understand. If I had accepted, it's okay. What? I, let's do it. You see, that baby in my womb will be used for a starting point. It was later the Lord was just giving me insight. Brethren, they have to give. They have to give. So the demon I was looking at was supposed to be the one in charge of the church. When the building is finished, the pastor will only be a representative who oppressed with the power given to him or her by the demon lineage of authority. You can't just take something from the enemy to function. You will give something. You will give and continue to give and continue to give. And <laughs> let's not go deeper, okay? When the time comes, I will, I will go into that area. It was at this point I understood the direction the Lord was leading me to the churches. These two encounters differentiate the leaders that started with the Lord but later digressed. For some reason, they choose other form of powers to assist and lead them in their respective ministries. The first demon living under the auditorium was brought in by the head minister. The head had the calling of God, knew the truth, but was not ready to faithfully persevere in Christ. We go through so many challenges. Some people have this difficulty in patience. Perseverance in prayer. Jesus fasted 40 days and 40 nights. Do you know that agents of, of, of Satan, like uh, these warlocks, when you, the agents that represent various cults of Satan, they are ready to go days, even more than 40 days, 60 days for fasting just to have a, visit Satan. But for the ministry, they will not, they will not persevere in dryness and wait patient for him because they want a quick access. So this is one thing that baffles me. I have read some, some books of court grandmasters. Some will stay without food for six months. They will only eat sparing stuff just to keep that body going because what? They want to have visit with Satan and get something from Satan. But look at some people that are called in the ministry. They will, to fast is a problem. They want it quick, but rather they want something fast. They go to the other people that have already taken power from Satan, and that's why they go to good doctors and they're being used. This is one thing that baffles me. When it, people that serve Satan, they are being tortured. I have seen a lot. I have seen a lot. They are being tortured. But having peace with Christ, oh my goodness, is the greatest thing any human being can have to, to, to have this peace fellowship relationship with christ and the holy spirit guides you i'm telling you i've gone to some battles there are there are four courts courts in the face of the earth the, the spirit of god granted me to visit each one the holy spirit attached to me with telling me sometimes i want to sleep up because it was during prayer these things were happening when i want to when i want to sleep up like i was holding something they were kind of present to me why don't you accept us we give you this some will just throw something at me right and i'll say what is this so because i'm in prayer i have to be alert in tongues as the lord was leading me so at a point i'll be so weak because it was like a long prayer and it's a long journey the energy was going out of me so when i get tired i could hear the voice of the holy spirit wake up wake up you make a mistake and when i wake up i say what is this because let me give you one example a clean clear example as i was going from section to section one asked me said why don't you accept us we give you so many houses so many this so many that in my head and asked myself 
am I the only? Is it how they connect to people? My head will be going like that. But what I'll be thinking, I'll be praying. I'm like, what did you see that you want to quench in me, right? So at a point, I was praying. While I was praying, I noticed that I was in front of one that appeared like a regular human being. This is cults. I'm telling you, brethren. I don't want to call the name. Only those in the school of theology, I use it to teach, okay? When I was, I was standing, this one, they were showing me, you see, fabrics, right? <clears throat> fabrics, you see, these qualities of fabric, I've never seen anything like that before. So you, you look by looking at it, you know it's of a high quality, very expensive. You say, you want this? Okay, we have, there's something like, um, like a, 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 a beautiful gold neck chain. It's like, um, it's like a brooch. I don't know how to, it's like the thick one, right? And he brought it, I was like, what is this? So as I was holding it, and it was like I was kind of, you know, I was in between prayer back and forth and all that. When I, I was about slipping off. And I was holding that and I'm like, what is this? I don't, when he showed me the fabrics, I'm not interested. Those things, I have more than enough that I'm even, I don't, I'm ready to give some out. And I don't value them. And then the Lord grant me grace not to value what I saw. And it's the grace of God. It's not by man's making. I cannot boast, right? So, but what I want to share here is that how the Holy Spirit guides us. So when I was holding that thing, he said, if you don't want this one, you can take this. I, I see, I see where I see was telling me you can take this. I noticed that I was getting weak. Then I noticed the spirit of God hit me. Wake up, you, you make wrong decision. And I woke up, you know, I was alert back there. I said, what is this? He said, you can have it. And when I was holding it, I was about going to my neck. It was about going to my neck. I was meant to understand if you have mistakenly put it on, it stick to the skin. This is where we are not. <laughs> I'm not the deliverance and all that. So I said, I threw it down. I said, I don't need this. What is this? I'm not interested. It was the, it the Holy Spirit that guides us in the right decision. And I experienced when Jesus said, I will send you to comfort her. He will teach you all things. He will be your helper. That is why I always encourage when you, whatever happens in your life, pray, Holy Spirit, please guide me. I don't want to make mistake. In your prayer, and when you make this prayer, brethren, I encourage you to make up your serious mind to please the Lord. The Lord knows his own. He knows his own, I'm telling you. So, this is just an example what I'm giving us. Because if this, those that already have ministry, they are not ready to fast. They don't wake up midnight and pray. You have to pray. It depends on everybody's calling, depends on anybody's strength, but he, the, the, the helper is there. The time, structure time to pray. He guides you. Once you open up to him, he will guide you. He's our helper. The Holy Spirit is our helper. He's attached to you. That's why when you accept Jesus as Lord, you are sealed. You are seriously sealed. So I'm surprised that some of these people, they want it fast. And you know what? They, they go into torture. Satan tortured them in the kingdom of darkness. I, I saw a lot. So these two encounters differentiate the leaders that started with the Lord but later digress. For some reason, they chose other form of powers to assist and lead them in their respective ministries. The first demon living under the auditorium was brought in by the head minister. The head had the calling of God, knew the truth, but was not ready to faithfully persevere in Christ. There are many of them, and they are the people Paul warned Timothy against. In 1 Timothy 4, 1 to 2, he said, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the later time some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirit and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Remember what Jesus told me in the beginning. He said that they are just using his name as a cover-up. And they do what they want to do. Remember when the Lord was cautioning me to put down everything he leaves me. So these leaders clearly, deliberately, and permanently departed from the truth and rejected Christ's doctrine. But after previous profession, profession of faith in Christ, they accepted the doctrine of the devil and speaking lies in hypocrisy. The demons expanded their doctrines indirectly through human leaders, pastors, ministers, the consciences of these people are seared with hot iron, branded and sealed. These preachers have permanently accepted the moral life of hypocrisy. They are sealed by sin as they teach and preach to people 
carrying around the awareness of their guilt. They go about, they know in their mind of mind that they are operating and functioning with wrong powers. Demonic powers. Satan will give signs and wonders. If you look at signs and wonders to be your source for giving your life to Christ, you'll be deceived. Don't look at the miracles. Don't look at the signs and wonders. Don't look at the magic they perform. If you hold on to the prophecies, or maybe the prophecy came to pass, or the, the signs and wonders, the, 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 the magical powers they function with, and to deceive, if you hold on to it as a Christian level, and say, oh, this is true man of God, you'll be deceived. You will surely be deceived. You have, must have a conviction in your heart to serve the Lord. If you focus on this, or to know if this person, this is a true man of God or woman of God, you will be seriously de deceived. Okay. The second demon sitting on the window happens to be the demon through which Satan spread profound blasphemy against the doctrine of Christ. Leaders ordained and post Christians that are not even sure whether they are called in the fivefold ministry to pastor some of their branches. This is where I see a lot. You see. When some people don't have the conviction that they are called in the ministry, and you see them, they are being posted in so many branches. We are in the part of the world that somebody can just take up an office. I say, I want to be a preacher. They'll go to school of theology and they stand office. Example, the first period I came, the first year I came to the US, there was a place we were supposed to worship. I just sat down. I was like, I was just like to just have a conversation with the head pastor there. And I asked him, how would you be a minister here? What are the rules for you to... I was new in America. He said, yeah, you have to go to school of theology. He was just guiding me. I said, okay, will you have the conviction that you are called? He said, anybody can be a pastor. Just go to school of theology and belong to any organization you are posted. I said, that's it? He said, yeah. I said, oh, to be a minister, a pastor, you must be called. So what I mean like the five-fold ministry, pastor, evangelist, apostle, prophet, teacher. You, this is the five-fold ministry. You must have a conviction, the office you attain. There are people called in this office. You must have a conviction and know. You see, the way you operate as a Christian, the Spirit of God, you see, your, your direction and your desire in that function area, you see it manifesting. You have interest in this area. And when it starts happening, you will know. The Lord will convict you. You know the direction you are going. So not everybody will be in this office. Not everybody will be in this office. But what I was made to understand is that here, when you judge, you can go to the school of theology and prove the post here and there. If the Holy Spirit convict is a questionable answer to them, not me. But I know. I will teach in the school of theology. I teach. You must have a conviction. You must know who you are. And it comes with desire. You will see. It comes with desire. And the Lord will confirm who is called. Not all are called in that office. You might be, there are so many offices God has created for any soul born here on earth. The Lord has a mission for you. The, more, the Lord has a will for you. The more you draw close to him, you find your office. He will direct you your path. Okay? The branch leader must be fully aware of what to do and what not to do. Because some people are giving offices. Where I'm heading to is that some people are operating in some offices and church fold, doing one thing or the other as the head pastors, head evangelists, whatever head there. Not knowing the foundation of wood where they are heading. That's where the danger is. They don't know. That's why we see a lot of this falsification. They give them assignment whereby this particular amount of money have to be post, being brought here. This have to be brought here. And if they are not able to attend to that, they carry out one thing or the other to complete the assignment. And one thing again is that they will not know the foundation where they are heading. That's a dangerous thing. So that is where we have a lot of deceptions and lies. And Satan loves this area. That's why we have the window demon. Satan loves this area, want to push people to do something. So another one is agreement. So we start, this one is strict agreement. Now, when you see this, like in this window demon, is the strict agreement. I do not want to call name, but I know one thing. The one I've already called, I will continue to use that one that you know. It's like TB Joshua agreed with Satan to carry out a mission. T.B. Joshua. 
this is an example I'm going to use. And you see all the people in the lineage, whom he pastored, whom he, who are his uh, CR1, CR2, or wise men, we have to check what is the foundation. Where is the source of this anointing and miracles coming from? They, there's so many names they call him. So I put that aside. There are other ones, the enemy. I use that as an example. In this, Satan have a system of operating in different where any part of the world. So you know what people value in this culture? You know what people look, how people are supposed to look? Satan will work it out to fit in in that culture to get the people there. Let us, let us not look down on Satan. He is very wise and smart. His Antichrist, his spirit of, his, he has the, spirit, the spirit of Antichrist which Satan gives out, he uses it to counterfeit what God is doing. To counterfeit against all that the Lord is doing. To counterfeit, to bring down the body of Christ. Many are deceived. If we do not draw close to Christ, many will be deceived. Okay? That's why some people are placed in... in okay, I'll give you one example for you to get where I'm heading to. One of the wise men of T.P. Joshua confessed that, that you see all those miracles that they do, that once T.P. Joshua come tap their back, they start doing something. He, he, he does something on them and go and do the job. That demon will control that human being. The guy said he was going now. Anything he thinks, he carries it out. Anything he thinks, he carries it out. Once he, he, he hit them on the back, he does something, conjures something, hit them on the back. He said he will stop. The guy was confessing. The guy was confessing. This is a true confession. They will, you see them, people start falling, people start rolling. Anything, you tell somebody jumping, somebody will jump. You tell somebody eat the grass, they will start eating the grass. Tear, you rip your clothes apart. This man, when he was alive, he derived joy. See somebody disgrace themselves on the screen. This is an example of what I'm telling you. So you find yourself in a place. What is the foundation there? This is a clean, clear example. So, the branch, if they make this person brain like, okay, I'll be using this as an example. If it's a See a one, see a two, you know, the branch leader must be fully aware of what to do and what not to do, even to the election of church leaders, workers, and any visiting minister. Instruction must always come from the head leader, like I used to be just as an example, who plays the pastor in the in that branch. So the window demon dictates based on the guidance of the power that plays the demon there. And in any circumstance where the ordained branch pastor leader does not yield to the agreed covenant may result to the consequences agreed upon. We look at, you can take your time and read the book of John chapter 10, 1 to 10, okay? And I, 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 will, I will look at this one. Jesus is the door, the good shepherd. That's what you read in this book of John chapter 10, 1 to 10. And I'm going to look at another place. I always quote the book of Romans 6, 16. Know you not that to whom you yield yourself servant to obey, his servant you are to whom you obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness too. Choose one. In obedience to righteousness, this is where Christ stands. I told you, I tell in the beginning, for you to test, Jesus must be glorified in whatever you hear. It must be that righteousness for you to please God. You must be for the goal, for purpose, for heaven. For you to live a true righteous life so you don't go back to your vomit. It's a, it must be a willful decision. It, like I'm giving you willful decision. It's a willful decision. You will not be forced. You won't be afraid in it. It is the Holy Spirit will not convict you with humility. In this type of message. For you to know and test the Spirit. Choosing whom to serve. After narrating this encounter in one of the conferences I had. After narrating, you know, giving people some in, inside the, in, in, in the area of whom to serve. I had a program. So I was brought out. I stood outside in front of uh, an open entrance of the building. From outside, I saw two men preachers, two men in suit, dressed in, two, in suit. They appeared to me like preachers. <clears throat> you, they look worried. You could see their face. They look worried. They were walking out towards the main door because I was brought out in front of the, the main door, just standing. 
I was waiting. I was like, please come, come. You know, I, I finish have I, fin I finish having conference. Then I know the message touched a lot of people that would really want to come out. Then I, I was brought out, I stood by the door and I stood out there and waited for them to come outside where I was standing. But they stopped and did not come further. Beside them was a lady because they started coming already, but they stopped. Beside them was a lady, more like an instructor. She forced on them, she, foc she focused on them, watching the next thing they wanted to do. I observed the lady saying something to them, to the, to the men, but I could not hear from where I was standing. My focus was on that, was that the men should come out of that building. I waited since they were looking at me, but they could not come because they were stopped by their leader. Then I was taken out from there. This is a self-will decision. Example I'm going, this is a revelation the Lord gave me. An example I'm going to use to kind of finalize this was, there was it was early last year or last year, no, last two years. A young man called me after I had a mid session. A young man called me. He said that he had my message and he has been worried. I said, okay, why are you worried? He said where he is, he's well paid. The minister he's working under is well known in the world. I use the word world. And that he knows very well that all this message I gave is what was happening in there. He knows that the man have a lot of things that are not right he's doing. And he they monitor them at all time. And they, he said he is well paid well to remain. But he has fear. I said, what is your fear? For him to come out, they might monitor him. I said, it's your self-decision. When you make up your mind, it's between you and God. Just make up your mind. Make up your mind. He said, even as he's communicating with me, they might be monitoring him. I said, I'm not afraid. But you don't have to be afraid because in this circumstance, it's to live is for Christ. Even if you die for Christ, this is where the decision starts and the Lord will uphold you. He will carry you along. You just have to make up your mind. He said that a lot of things that they show in the media are manipulations and lies. They create so many manipulations and bring it before the media. People will be thinking it's of God. That he's afraid he don't want to go to hell. I say it's a decision you have to make. You know, people take the name of Christ to, to hypnotize people and it's not Christ. He said he's ready to come. And then I, I gave him guidance for prayer. I gave, told him what to do. You know, I told him, look, what you want to do right now, when you go in your closet, in your room, anything you know that they gave you, leave them in that room. Before you do the audition, you have to go into fasting. I gave him guidance and prayer, what he has to do. So when you finish, you, this prayer is between you and God. The Lord knows that you called me. The Lord knows. And I pray with him. The Lord knows what you have to do. And he will guide you. He will back you up because you made up your mind to serve him. So I told him when you finish, this is the day you will move. The Lord will guide you. You want to, this prayer is for the Lord to prepare you to move out. And I tell you, when you are moving out, if you remember the clothes you bought with your own money, that is not from them. Anything they have given to you, you know you got from them. Don't take those things, but take these things that you bought with your own money. That is not their money. Take those things that are yours. Just walk out. And when you walk out, don't give information where you are going. Find a place, and this is between you and God, so that you stay there, the Lord will make provision for you. That was the advice I gave him. So, brethren, you see, if you remember when the Lord cautioned me to always write what he told me, Look at what he said. Let me go back again because I said when the love came back, he said, look at what I Lord, Why am I seeing only your back? Because those of you that are late, I said in the beginning, when the Lord cautioned me to write everything he shows me, I was not really serious because I was, my mind was getting a better job. And I know that better job will not give me time to do what the Lord want me to do. So I didn't write most of what I want to, I'm supposed to write what the Lord revealed to me. So, when he visited, he, was, he, he turned his back on me. Let, me. let me go back again to our conversation. I pleaded and said, Lord, why am I seeing only your back? 
He replied and said, you choose to do what you want and disappoint me like others who did not do what I want them to do, but were after their own belly. They walk according to their own desires and not what I instruct. They are lost in fame. Therefore, they preach and teach what pleases them and their followers because they are open to the evil one that's not me and not me. They are after fame and wealth and they have gone out of focus. They use the scriptures and my name as a shield before their crowd. You see, this is where the whole thing is happening now. They use the, the name of Christ as a shield so that they can do what they want to do before the crowd. I want to use this to encourage us. This is the end of our many a deceived session today. The Lord want me to bring this to us. Wherever you are worshipping, please go back to the scripture. Give the, look at the examples I gave you to test. We will have a session on Thursday life as well. So I can, I can teach and guide you guys how you can be able to detect. Number one, wherever you do your worshipping, you must have the desire to worship in the worship the Lord. Number one. The communication and the messages you hear. Number one. We lead is it glorifying Jesus? Number one. Number two, is it convicting me of sin? For me not to sin against God. Number three, am I reminded that my name, I've accepted Jesus, my name is written in the book of life. Am I remember, number four, that the goal for this session, for children of God that will make heaven. This is what you want to look at. And finally, this person presenting this to me, is this person presenting himself to me or is he presenting Christ? This is where we want to test it. And in this session, you must be convicted to serve the Lord the more. You must be convicted to draw close to Christ. You must be convicted to live to please the Lord. This is where you find, am I hearing the truth? And finally, the prayer session will lead to convict you to desire heaven and to desire to draw more close to Christ, more than anything. You will not be moved. You should not be moved to believe in the person praying also there are some certain type of prayers that are lies you need to check for example if i come to a pastor and say there's a man i know i really want this man and the pastor didn't counsel me on waiting on the lord i know i'm a married woman give i'm telling i'm guiding you guys and when i come to this person i want this man did that, was I corrected? Was I rebuked? Was I was somebody prayed for to have another woman's man, or was somebody prayed for to continue stealing? When you know, because the man know that they bring testimony there, right? They pray for them to have more access to scam, and they know very well that the job this person does is not a right job. This is where you find out, find your feet quickly. Find your way. Because that's the wrong one. You can't come to me and tell me to pray for you because you are in scamming. You can, whatever name, you, you can, they polish it now. I don't know the name, they polish it. You walk online, you get access to money online. How does this money, I will understand. So, but if I know that this access to connection to people's account is what this person does, and I'm told to pray for this person, I will not pray for that person. So you, this is where you want to check it. If I come before and people keep saying so many things about me, you have to go and pray, Lord, who is this woman? There's so many issues. They talk about this woman. Always coming out in the media. What she did. What, go and seek the face of God. Is this the right place for me? You know why you do that? There's a transference of spirit. The person might be pretending and being whatever they be, present themselves. There's a transference of spirit. And that transference of spirit will continue to lead, be in the people, the people will not grow. Rather, they will be doing that thing, secret thing. It might be masturbation. It might be adul ad 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 adultery. Infidelity. Honestly, there's transference of spirit. It might be smoking. It might be, be drinking so much, alcoholic. It might be lukewarmness. You are not cold. You are not hot. There will be a transference of spirit. 
That is why you want to check where you find yourself. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this session. I pray this message reach so many lives. Open the eyes and understanding of your children to draw close to you in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray for wisdom, knowledge, understanding upon these lives. Father, give every one of us the discerning spirit to discern if where we are is the right place you want us to be. Holy Spirit, I pray that you continue to teach us and lead us to live to please you. Help us to be discerning in the word of God. Increase our prayer life in Bible session and minister to us so that we know the directions you want for us in Jesus' name. I pray for revival of the Holy Spirit. I pray for the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Father, over these lives, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. I'll see you in daily devotion. and mark your date and calendar on Thursday. We will be having the conference. It's, uh, it will be uh, open here on, on live Thursday. That's in three days time. Okay. God bless you in the name of Jesus. If you have any question, you can send in questions. Okay. Today is the, here today is the 18th. We have 19, 20, 21, 22. So is it 22nd? of of this month life here we want to look at how these people have been manipulated which bewitched and hypnotized that people can't even test the spirit to know the spirit that's leading people so those of you that are late you can watch from beginning if you have any questions send me a whatsapp message and by the grace of god i will respond i'll see you in daily devotion god bless you in jesus name amen